I'm just going to do quick introductions. Uh, my name is Josh Leventhal. I'm with the Minnesota Historical Society Press. Uh, I have the pleasure of editing this book um, with Al and, and Jim Walsh and Des Dickerson. Uh, a couple of quick um, just procedural things. They'll, they'll talk for about an hour, have a conversation. We'll have leave time for questions. And then Unless they'll go blank. <laughs> yeah, who knows? Uh, and then they'll be at that table over there, kind of under the television monitor, and we'll ask you to line up towards the window, and they'll all be there to sign your books uh, after the, the talk. So do stick around for that, and while they're signing books, of course, we'll have Curtis A. and his band up on stage playing some music. Quick uh, introduction we have uh, on the right of the stage, your left, Jim Walsh, longtime music writer, musician, author, multiple books. Uh, Jim did a great job with the introduction for this book and other uh, text contributions. He really helped frame the story. On the far side, of course, we have Des Dickerson. alongside Prince for uh, about five years and has had a music career of his own for I guess 40 years by now, doing a variety of things in music and entertainment. We went on tour together. We did. Yeah. 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 Alan we were going to a party with him. Uh, that was and a long time ago in the galaxy far, far away. <laughs> well, and our man of the hour, of course, as you all know, is Alan Bolio, the photographer. Yeah. Al spent years uh, chronicling prints and uh, doing some amazing photography that we all know and love so well. A lot of stuff we haven't seen before is in this book. Prints on the road, prints behind the scenes, um, in, in our studio, and they had a great relationship and a great friendship. And uh, as you'll hear, he's got amazing stories to tell. So I'm gonna hand it over to Jim, who's gonna kind of lead us through this conversation. And uh, again, stick around for the music and for the book signing afterwards. Thanks. Okay, shout, shout out to Josh, let us know. Yeah. 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 Thank you, Jack. Alan Dedes, good to be here with you. Al, Al Bolio in the late 70s was as busy a photographer as you can be. He was shooting yeah. fashion for Davidson and Donaldson. He was shooting covers for Minneapolis St. Paul Magazine. Absolutely. Every cover. He was doing other photo shoots, and then he got a call, kind of out of the blue, of an artist that you knew of, only via your brother, and, and hearing soft and wet at a, at a bar in St. Louis Park, right? Exactly. And he said, what? He said, you should call this guy and deal with the doctor, and I go, I don't know how I'd do that. <laughs> and then how long after that conversation? Two weeks later, he saw a poster I did, and he called me from... Andre Simone's house, because Bernadette Anderson, his mother, <coughs> hired me to shoot the Saves of Blackness, which is in the book. And from that, uh, Prince said to Bernadette, give me that guy's number. <laughs> <laughs> so he called me. And, you know, I didn't expect him to always talk falsetto. And Des could kind of back me up on this, but when he called, he goes, uh, this is Prince. I want to talk to uh, Napoleon. And I went, okay. Right? Yeah, yeah. His voice was on the phone very, very low. Yeah. Very low. Right. And uh, I just was, I'll go, okay, you're Prince. So uh, it started there, and then uh, we did our first sort of shoot, and, uh, and I know we could have gotten anybody in the world. And I was kind of bare bones at the time, which means I was just starting out. Have a studio, Des, you were there. Oh, yeah. And Our uh, first shoot as a band was with you. Yes, exactly. Was that a band? band? I'd say that, you know, loosely. It was, <laughs> looked like a bunch of homeless guys. Hey, know. I got to say, no, I, did, did Des, I got to disagree here because, and I'm so glad that Kurt is here tonight because that show at Sam's, now First Avenue, that was, was that 1980, March 1980 or 81? Yeah, 80, I think it was 80 probably. So Kurt opened that show. Right, right. And, and I remember when you guys, and Al was there, right? Right. So it's a, it's a thrill that 
you know, we're all here tonight, yeah. still kicking, but I walked into that place and I saw you guys, I thought you were the coolest man I'd ever seen. My God. Yeah. They were. And yeah. Al captured that and, yeah. and, and went about capturing that. That's right. And, you know, Al, what, it was a wild ride, right? What, it, what has your kind of elevator speech been about Prince, your friend and, and mentor? What, what, what was that like being around him and working with him and, and now? Oh, it's very inspiring, and, and uh, I learned a lot from it. I mean, I'm sure Des did too. I mean, Des is a great guitar player, legendary. We all took the stress in his own way because he was such a revolution in Gary, and, and he would let us do our own thing, right? Yes, he would. You know, and he knows I would have kicked it. No, <laughs> <laughs> just kidding. Yeah, he'd laugh at that joke. He <laughs> would. He would. And you know, he let us do our own thing. And it's like it's not like we have these massive meetings about album covers, about you know, Dirty Mind controversy, so great. or 1999. You know, he would just call me on the phone and goes, "I want to be shot on a bed. You deal with that." <laughs> <laughs> so I did. <laughs> And then 1999, I wanted to be shot on a newspaper. You deal with that. Okay, all right. And then 1990 goes, go see Blade Runner. Which I would have done, but there was no internet. There was no, uh, no cell phones. Um, the V8 store wasn't, uh, they didn't have it yet. And it was just in the movie theaters like a week ago. So I just asked friends, what did Blade Runner look like? And they said, neon and smoke. And then when he came into my studio and I had all this neon and smoke, he goes, God, you got it, Al, that's great. <laughs> so I wish that I would have seen the movie, but maybe it would have been different. <laughs> Al, where exactly was your studio on First Avenue? It was in the Gorham building, which is where the Target Center is now. And to me, that is mind-blowing that all this activity took place at First Avenue in your studio. Right. You know, kind of hallowed, not kind of, but hallowed ground for, for Prince, I mean. Absolutely, you just had to walk down the street. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Right, right. Well, how did you come up with an idea like you flip the bed around for Dirty Mind? That was just, that was your art. Right. I mean, and he, he must have really appreciated that. Did you talk, did you, did you articulate any of this stuff with him? No, because like I said, he, on the phone he goes, uh, I want to be shot on a bed, and, and I don't mean any, by any means weird, but you know, when I'm shooting for Warner Brothers, and this guy calls, he was to say, you know, you get to do your first album cover, and I was like, oh my God, I almost fell off my chair. I was going, it's my dream to do an album cover. And uh, he goes, yeah, I want to be shot on a bet. So <laughs> picture that in your mind for a second, right? <laughs> so I went to the secondhand store, well, not actually recycling center, and I found this bed springs that made uh, a pattern. And uh, he came in the studio and he loved it. And I shot him on that. And then uh, the rest is like history. Right on. Des, what did you find with Al? I mean, you've you worked with a lot of photographers. People have been taking your picture most of your life. What, what, what sets him apart, maybe, or, or memories of, of those shoots? I mean, undoubtedly, it, it was, was and is his eye. He had, and that's what, that's what Prince trusted as well. Right. He, he knew that he could just give you like a you know a couple of words a small word picture and and you would get it and you would see it beyond even what he, he gave you to work from right. and that was why when I left the band the only guy that I would let shoot me was you right because I trusted your eye because you know it's it's one of those things somebody taking your picture is like you know you're really you're putting your life in their hands exactly. so that's it Al just has an eye like no other that's right. Did you have any, I mean, you were you were saying that's kind of weird, you know, Prince on a bed. Right. Did you have any idea of, of trying to impart and capture that sexuality? And, because it's so raw right. and so great, were you going for that or was that just Prince? No, we were going for that. I mean, he would come into my studio and we would do practice that. Like, he, he brought death one day. Just him and Dev showed up at my studio and we shot probably 10 rolls of film. And because he was shooting for an image or searching for an image. And then we finally get on the mic. And uh, Dirty Mind, we finally found one. And 
because the album before that was the blue one, where he was just a headshot. Yeah. yeah. And that's what I told him. I go, that's just a <laughs> we, headshot. We had a name for that record, but I'm not going <laughs> to. <Right. laughs> no, the, the picture. Yes. Right. The, the picture. Because, okay, let's just, it just, this is just a small gathering. <laughs> you know how the makeup was like all off? And, and his skin tone looked like, you know, something out of a Gunga Din movie, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> so we, we called it the Sabu record because the, the picture was just all off. And that, that was just our inside. It's not an inside joke now. But right, right. <laughs> you know, so I wanted to do something that was way beyond just a headshot. And uh, so uh, that's why I got the, the bed that made a pattern. And then he had the trench coat, that was the first part of that, and the bikinis, and the leg warmers, and rude boy button, and so then it showed his sexuality, you know, then it showed his, um, where he was going, um, I mean, he could have some of the lyrics, like, what did he say in one of them, am I? Well, am I black or white, am I straight or gay? Right. And actually, that, that went back to the, the tour before the record, there was a moment in the dressing room at the Roxy in LA where he said, okay, what I want to do is for each of us to have a real distinct sort of a visual personality. And he said, I'm going to portray pure sex. That was the first time he articulated wow. it. Right. So when that's that where place? it went. And that was at the Roxy. Wow. We were doing like one of those, you know, all the tastemakers and the kingmakers and the, the, the press thing, you know, right. where it's all VIPs and the audience. And that was it. That was the turn. And then you captured him. Again, right. he trusted you to capture him. Exactly. And then I captured him from then on it, so that was fun. You guys yeah. tell the story about opening for the Rolling Stones. Oh, I can't. I'm going to. And you, uh, but I'm you gonna captured amazing, that. amazing photographs from that show that I had never before seen well, until we got to see this book. Right. And you guys, this is a glorious book. It's going to outlive all of us. And it's all these photos are finally between two hard covers and congratulations. It's really good. Really. I want to thank Jeff for doing any of that. My pleasure. We had a good time talking about it. But I'll let Des talk about the Rolling Stones. Please. So, you know, in rehearsal one day, one of our managers came in and said, you guys are going to be over with the Stones on, you know, this one, whatever upcoming tour it was. The Start Me Up tour, I guess it was. No, it was Tattoo You. Mm -hmm. no. Yeah, well, whatever. <laughs> you know, there's this obscure band from the UK. I just thought we can give them a break. No, so it, it was it was one of those things where before we did, we were originally scheduled to do Philadelphia and LA. We had to back out of the Philadelphia shows because of a conflict. Journey did those shows instead. We, incidentally, they got booed off the stage. Just so you know, which should have been a tip off. But, but we had this weird setup where we had a Friday show, day off on Saturday, then a Sunday show. Um, and Mick had handpicked, as he did all the opening acts, he had handpicked, he loved Prince, huge Prince fan. So, you know, we came out that first day, and that was when Prince had started, you know, rocking the bikini underwear and the leg warmers and the trench coat. And there were, I, I got the head count from, from one of the security people, there were 5,000 Hells Angels alone in the audience. 120,000 people, 5,000 Hells Angels. They were not fans of the bikini underwear and the leg warmers. So, so there, a few things got thrown that, that first day, but it was like those, remember those old paper Coca-Cola cups that had like the wax coating on? It was just that stuff, that, it didn't leave a mark. Or anything. But, I mean, Prince hadn't done a ton of shows up right. to that point, and had never done like a big rock show. So he got freaked out. He left the stage, left the stage a little early. You know, we kind of muddled through, got off stage. By the time we got backstage, we found out he was gone. He was, <laughs> my man was at the airport. He was leaving on a jet plane. I didn't even know this. I, I had to ask Daz where he was. <laughs> well, yeah, I mean, it, it was, it was kind of strange. So long story short, I mean, the day off in between, people are scrambling, you know, management calls him, trying to get him to come back, he won't come back. Mick calls him, trying to get him to come back, he won't come back. You know, manager comes to the door, yeah, you know, Des, you know, he'll listen to you, you need to talk to him. So call him up, we're on the phone for 45 minutes. And flat out, I just kind of put it in the context of, we can't let him do us like this. We can't let him run us out of time, you know, appeal to the manhood thing. So, so he came back, and like the Sunday afternoon, it, it was on, man. I mean, we got, 
The thing he didn't know was the Friday, Stones fans threw stuff at them. You know, that was like a, a, a term of endearment. Let me pelt you with shoes. So the, the throwing stuff wasn't that big a deal, but by the time we did the Sunday thing, it was like, it was on, man. Right, right. It was on. But, but you know, we did 20 minutes and got through, and it became like the stuff of but legend. But did you change the, the set list? To we be did. Bit yeah, more? we tried to make it as rock as we could make like it. Like you did Bambi. Right? Yeah, we did Bambi. I've never awesome. heard Prince do Bambi live before. That was the first time. And, and it was awesome. It was awesome. And there were, awesome. people loved it. It wasn't... You know, it's turned into this folklore that it was this this bloodbath, <laughs> and at times it seemed like it. But but it really it, it went over well, and obviously that's still part of the legend. So. Well, and but you, you know, captured it. I mean, right. some of those photos. I mean, like, I had flashbacks. Right. I started right. ducking. No. Yeah. I know. <laughs> <laughs> but you know, that's a lesson for all of us. That you know, here's Prince, middle of his career, and he gets downgraded, at least a little bit. I mean, it was a test. It was a test. What did you do? Come back and make the best albums ever. Come on. Yeah. Yeah. Chris. Yeah. Well, we're all down at some point. You know? Got to come back. You know, I have anxiety. I have depression. Um, or sometimes I can't get out of bed. You know, I don't know about anybody else, but That's I don't right. care That's about right. it. Yeah. That's fine. You know, but we're all going to have days like that, but the sun's going to come up again. We're going to work things out and we're going to be strong and we're going to hang in there as long as we can, right? Buddy? That's right. And you're up here now. And yeah. it's his moment. Yeah. 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 I just, I'm here to tell us Al, the day Prince died, a lot of your photos were just flying all over the planet. Oh, they were. What was that like? And is it a... Is it, it was a sad moment for me. I'm going to tell you why, Jim. It's just, he was a friend of mine. Um, and you know, Des, he was, I was in the inner circle, and uh, he was such a true friend of mine. I cried for a week. You know, I saw all these people at 7th Street Entry or in 1st Avenue celebrating Prince's life. And I'm going, where were these people before? And that's a different feeling. But, um, uh, yeah, it took me a few weeks to kind of get over that because he was a friend of mine. Well, you, literally, you guys literally palled around in your van. Right. And he, I mean, I love the story in the book about you, you know, going to Hot Licks or Music Land to pick up the records. Right. On, you know, Street Day Tuesday. You know, and he would know. never pay me back for my... You know, <laughs> <laughs> That's so Al, Al, That's go so in there and get controversy. Okay. Because <laughs> it'll look stupid if I run in there. So I run in there, I pay for everything. And I come back into the car and I go, where's my money, man? <laughs> Brother still owes me money. Yeah. <laughs> Estate that. <laughs> That's just the way he was, you know? I was just like, yeah, just go do it. You know, and then, uh, okay. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah, he, he felt bad, like, going into record stores, picking up his own records or his own posters or his own... Stuff, so you take me. <laughs> you do it, Al. <laughs> and I was happy to do it. it. Really was. Al, do you have a favorite photo in the book? A single photo, or or? Well, there's two. I mean, they, uh, the the mirror photo that they used on uh, microphone and piano. That was my favorite and Jen's favorite. Where's Jen? Right here. <laughs> Holding up the baby. Like the scene from that's, the moment. That's my girl out right there. She's my rock. She's my anxiety partner. There. Yeah. I'll give Jen a hand. Um, yeah, I can't go anywhere without her. Um, and I think people with anxiety know that they need something, either a dog or a tambourine or, or another person. For me, it's Jen, my rock. So, yeah, where is Jen? Jen, where are you? Hi, Jen. Thanks for being here. Thanks for being Al's Rock. Where, where was this photo shot? That was in Chicago. Uh, that was in Chicago. I, we were on tour. I think. I think that was the controversy tour. We actually got some decent dressing rooms then. Yeah, <laughs> and that was that was before things fell apart and we had separate dressing rooms. Right, that right. Because the, right. <laughs> the next tour, <laughs> you got a little testy. Yeah, it did, it did. And then I think the other favorite photograph of mine is uh, Prince on the uh, uh, ping pong table and he's got his finger like this because 
That's so unlike Brent. <laughs> so, can you find that one real quick? I bet you can. <laughs> no. no. I'll try and find it, but James only has a request and we have to ask you about it. Okay. On page 11, the white face photo. Oh, no, that there. photo right here. Where is that from and, and what was going on there? That's Prince's birthday. Mm -hmm. And he had a warehouse. Uh, if you know where Menards is on 394, it was across that. He rented a warehouse. I think, Des, you were there. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Way too many hours. Yeah, there. I know. <laughs> I think he locked the doors and wouldn't let us out. Yeah, I think he did do that. And uh, so I took that picture. Nobody, I don't think anybody ate that cake. I don't remember. But is that the time when Prince brought out a wild animal? Mm, I don't remember thing? that. Might have been the next one. Yeah, the next one he brought out actually a real wild animal. I can't remember what it was because I was yeah. scared to death. It was like either a panther or a tiger or a lion or something like that. Oh, my. <laughs> I know. Yeah. <laughs> And this is on his birthday, and I'm going, okay, I, I don't need to picture or any of that, so. <laughs> so. But he did throw himself the best birthday parties. Though. Yes, he did. Yes, he did. He remembered June 7th. That's his birthday, June 7th, so remember that. Al, what happened in this photo, though? Why, is it white face, or is it cake, or what is it? Uh, that's just Prince being Prince. But, uh, <laughs> on his birthday. Cool. Uh, you want to go into that? I don't really know why he was wearing white face either. I know he really liked mimes, though. <laughs> Crazy. Uh, you know, another fascinating part of the book is that the controversy artwork, it was put together with you with a key liner from Donaldson's whose name is lost to history. It is. She basically made the cover of controversy and you know, key lined all those those letters and headlines in, and yeah, and we can't remember her name. Can we? No. And the lawsuits come in any day. Mick, be prepared for another one. <laughs> no, so what what happened actually is, you know, Prince called me and and said I want to be shot on newspaper. Now all I could think of my is my aunt's parakeet. I know that's bad. <laughs> that was the first thing in my mind, and so I called my brother. My brother Rick was a famous art director, very creative mind. And he goes, you know what you should have? You should have the Controversy Daily. And have him give you song titles or something. And so I went, well, we got to do this in 24 hours, so we'll have to see about that. So I call him back. Now, he's infamous for changing his phone number. And luckily, I got a hold of him right away because he still had the same phone number. <laughs> and I said, Prince, just throw out names you want on your cover. And he goes, Ronnie goes to Russia, Joni. And I, I'm going, I thought they'd be song titles. <laughs> I mean, so yeah, it was, he was like way ahead of that curve. And then we did have a key liner from Donaldson's that I enslaved on making the controversy daily from my, my brother's mind to uh, making that cover. So, cool, that's how it ended up. Very cool. And I mean, I, again, it's like it's funny. I was at Target Center. I was watching the Timberwolves the other night. And I'm thinking, Prince was naked here, yeah. naked in your studio. You and naked Prince. Yeah. Tell us, what was that like? Well, That's quite a stream of consciousness there. <laughs> From wolves to naked. I don't think I can answer anything about that. Yeah. No. No. <laughs> All right, we'll leave it to our imaginations. Yeah. Perfect. Al Bolio wrote the guitar riff for Let's Go Crazy. Is that yes. true? That is true. I believe it's true. Now, do I know 100%? No. I, I remember jamming uh, with Jimmy Jam and Terry Lewis. I wish you would have been there. And uh, I it would have been a lot louder if I would yeah, have. Yeah, exactly. Uh, and uh, I wrote this riff and uh, some guitar uh, uh, structure to chords and. I was jamming with Jimmy Jam, Terry Lewis, and Jelly Bean Johnson. Put some jelly on it, right? Yeah, yeah. And then, um, uh, you know, Prince went around and played drums for 20 minutes, and he played uh, keyboard for 20 minutes, played bass for 20 minutes, which is, he's all fantastic musician. And then finally he comes over to me and kicks with me off the guitar. And so finally he goes, I gotta play guitar. I go, okay. So I didn't have anything else to do, so I just, you know, sat there and watched those guys jam, and they were. Fabulous musicians, all of them. And then Prince afterwards says, you know, 
come here, come here. I went, what? He goes, that last thing you were playing, can you record that at my studio? And I said, sure. So he brings me to the Purple House, Chan has the student, the member in the basement. Yep. He had the 224. Plugs me right in the board, and he goes, just play that riff, and then play those chords, and, you know. And he goes, at the end of it, he says to me, he goes, what do you want for it? And I go, what? So he, uh, how about your next album before anybody else has it? So at 10 o'clock the next morning, his secretary comes to me with a tape of 1999 before anybody else had it, which was probably only two weeks. <laughs> so, but he paid me something for it. So I think it turned out to be Let's Go Green. Amazing. Al Bolio, songwriter. Al, <laughs> you, you, in the book you told me, you said, I'm a studio cat. Yes. I'm a studio cat. You did not like the idea of shooting live music. No, at first it scared me to death. I needed a, I was brought up in a system where I was in a studio at all points, and I knew where my subject was, I knew where my my people were, and I could put my lights where I needed them to be. And then, uh, I think it was in Nashville, he was doing something for Rolling Stone, and they were uh, reviewing his album, Dirty Mind. And a, a photographer showed up, and he kicked him out immediately, and then called me and said, Al, you're coming to Nashville tomorrow. I went, really? <laughs> and there's like this uh, plane ticket waiting for me at Minneapolis St. Paul Magazine, or uh, MSP. And I go to Nashville the next day, and he goes, I want to be shot like those Playboy ones where they're like looking off, talking to somebody, and I did those. And that took like about 15, 20 minutes, and I took some other shots. And finally it comes to him, you know, he goes, why don't you shoot some live stuff for me like when I'm on stage? And I said, yeah, but you'll be moving and there'll be lights I can't control. And I'm a studio cat, I, I don't know how to do that. And it turns out I don't. <laughs> so it was the first concert with Rick James and uh, you and... Uh, and that's a whole other thing. And that's a whole other thing. But then, then, since they were so busy arguing about having their own tour at the time, they, he didn't even ask about the photos, and good thing for me. So the next one, I think we were in Atlanta the next night, and uh, this, this generous, very generous photographer. I said, just show me the things that you use. And, and he showed me, so at least I got things in focus and sharp. <laughs> so it was a start, and then, you know, you get to learn the tricks of the trade, and then I think about two weeks into the tour, I had it. I was, I was a great photographer at that point, but believe me, at the beginning, <laughs> it was bad. <laughs> Des, um, in, in the, Des writes a beautiful uh, foreword to the book and talks about kind of like, you know, I mean, it was back in the day and it was before, you know, pre-Purple Rain. What is your favorite part? I mean, and, and that's special to you, right? I mean, it, it, you kept that near and dear to your heart Absolutely. all these years. And what is your favorite part of the book that way, that it, that it, that it you know, captured this time in your life? What, what do you love about it? I mean, to me, that, that period of time was like indescribable and irreplaceable because it was the beginning of something that no one knew was going to end up being what it was, you know? And Al was like an integral part. It, it, it wasn't just that he was documenting something. He was a part of it along with us. So for me, I mean, literally, some of those pictures, I look at them and I do, it takes me back to the moment, because the moment was so kinetic and, and powerful and, and deep. And, and I gotta say this, you know, a lot of people since Prince has passed have kind of jumped up and, you know, tried to stand on his shoulders and impress us all with how tall they are, you know what I'm saying? But the reality is there are people who along with him were part of that whole sort of emergence and Al was a, a major part of that in terms of how the, the look and the feel and the texture and the vibe came together. And people can talk about it, but some people be about it. So, you know what I mean? Yeah. For me, that's yeah. worth it. Thank you very much. Well, let's get Curtis.
say up here? Yeah, we got to ask some questions. We have some questions from okay. them. Right. Yeah, I got to say, you know, I interviewed Alan for the book and for the introduction, and you know, one of the first things we talked about is how much he loves Curtis A. Yeah. And you know, did you? Sh that, that's my question. Do you have another book in you? Do you have lots of Curtis A. photos? I mean, or absolutely, absolutely. Kurt. You're going to be famous, believe me. <laughs> but honestly, yeah, you sure. shot a lot of people back in the day. Yeah, I shot Curtis say, uh, The Damage Is Done, I think was the name of that album. Um, ever since I saw Kurt when I was old enough to drink, 21, um, I saw Curtis say and his band back then, and I thought he was the most talented musician I ever saw. And it's, you're lucky to hear him tonight. He is my hero, my personal hero. So, questions from the massive crowd here at the Fetus. Anyone have questions? Any questions? I think they All right, good night. Thank you, everyone. Yes, thank you. Okay, go ahead. The greatest photo shoot I ever had. The craziest. The craziest. Um, the first one because I think it was under so much pressure in the star photo of uh, him and the um, that's on the cover because I was so nervous it was Prince <laughs> and it's the first time I ever shot somebody of that I, I don't know he had this thing about him and you know what I mean um, star quality and it just I don't know how to explain it more than that that it just um, the minute you looked at him, you just knew he had it. He had something, you know, and you were trying to capture that. So I did the best I could. And you were very worried when you when when he saw the proofs. Yeah, these are bad. These are bad. Yeah, he goes, um, Al, these are really bad. <laughs> and I was going, oh no. The first shoot I do with Prince, and he hates him. And he goes, no, these are really bad. Well, you don't have to rub it in. <laughs> he goes, no, these are bad, man. These are cool. Oh, and then I got it. Then I got it. Oh, that is good. That is good, yes. Awesome. Anybody questions, else? questions. Yeah, what was the uh, Rick James Prince beef? Was that more speculation or was that legitimate? It was uh, the place where insecurity meets egomania, <laughs> which basically describes every famous person you've ever seen. So, no, what it was, was the, it was the beef that wasn't a beef, you know, because it was more, each was afraid to be the first one to make a move kind of a thing. So, there was a, a night on the road where myself and Bobby Z um, went to Rick's room, like, you know, late, and just talked, and found out that, the, that there was no beef. And the next day, kind of, you know, got them to the two of them together in the room, and they were cool from that that point on. So it was, you know, it was just a whole lot of nothing. Yeah, and I love Rick was one of my favorite people. I love. We all love Rick. Yeah. Nothing wrong with that. Anybody else? Yeah. 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 That he was short? No, he's good. Yeah. 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 Couldn't resist. Yeah. Yeah. Sweet yeah. Yeah. There's so many. I mean, for by so many different you know, yeah. fashions. Uh, that's that's too broad of a question. Uh, you need to nail it down a little bit. It's been turning into a week long. Yeah, go ahead. Hello, my name is Thomas Smith. I forgot Prince several times in the day. And Dallas, a few times I saw you with him. Which show stands out in your mind as being the best? Wow. Um, you know, there were a lot of them. Certain, certain, certain shows kind of stand the test of time better. I mean, honestly, I gotta say the the Stones thing, the first show That's right. before he left the stage, because right. that that first moment we finished the first song and that sound, I can still hear it. You know, <laughs> most of the hundred twenty thousand people were really into it, and I'll never forget that sound as long as I live. And then there were some other shows, some really small shows. Some shows are memorable for, for odd reasons. Like we, right after we were on American Bandstand, we did this show in Dallas at this place called, I don't know, the Cowboy Place or something like that. They, yeah, they, I remember that. The promoter put us in like the wrong place. And there were like, 
there were like three people there. We, we had more crew there than there was audience. So we, we went from this mountaintop of, we were just on American Bandstand to, there's nobody here. But you guys played great that night, I remember we, that. Yeah, because we were mad. <laughs> yeah, yeah, really, a lot of energy. A lot of energy. On the 1999 record, it's got the revolution written backwards. Was he talking about that back then, as far as having that as a band name, or? Yeah, that yeah, that, that was, he introduced the name, the revolution, on that cover. That's what that was about. Okay. okay. All right, I wanted to know how, what brought about the book, and why two and a half years later, what got you going? Thinking, I got to do a book. Right. I, I can't talk about all of that with my lawyer in the room. But, <laughs> <laughs> but um, I, I just would like to talk about why I did it for the Minnesota Historical Society. Yes. And that's because I think that's what Prince would have done. He was from Minneapolis. He made Paisley Park his home. He made Chan Hansen his home. Um, he loved Minneapolis, so that's why I went with the Historical Society and the famous Jim Walsh here. Awesome. And I called by my friend Des Dickerson to do the phone. And I was happy to do it. Right. Thank you. Thank you. Now we'll go sign some books, but listen to Curtis say for a little bit. He's fantastic. Al Bolio, you guys. You know, something I don't often ask you guys all to do, but share these videos. It's super duper important, and it's what real friends do. So share these everywhere, and we can keep growing this community, and I'll see you in the next video.